Welcome to another episode of Lifestyle After Five. If you've been following us in our Unveiling Your Future series with Richard Rukowski. We're back for another episode. Of course, we're your hosts, me and Lloyd Shu, and we want to What's welcome good? back Richard Rukowski as we discuss digital culture wow. and its impact on modern society. What's up? Welcome back, Richard. Yeah, we're all here, we're all here. So good to see y'all back again for another one. Y'all ready to do this? So much to impact in our last episode as we discussed uh, what is futurism and futurism one on one, as as you referred to it, Rich. So I am definitely excited and can't wait to hear about the digital culture and its impact on modern society and just breaking down what is digital culture. Yeah. Are you sure you're ready? Right. Are you ready for this? Y'all got y'all notepads out. <laughs> I, I don't know if they're really ready. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be it won't be particularly new, but it's gonna be in a much better and a much more positive direction. But but yeah. you know, uh, but I think I think you're blowing their minds. I mean, I think the average person, which you giving them that one on one, they sitting around like this, trying to figure <laughs> out if they're looking like look what, what what's going on here. This this is too much. I what? never heard these <laughs> concepts before. But luckily, Rich is here and he's making it real for me. And I now know what it means. And I know it could be able to change my life in a more positive direction. That's what the, that's what's going on in the back of their mind. Exactly. I, that, that's what we're going to do. We're we going to do You're giving them hope. <laughs> and it works all better if we're all using the same map and the same roadmap. It yeah. does. Because, uh, yeah. Because we're it's all starting in Chicago. Yeah. And we want to get the text and we want to get the Dallas and we're all using different maps. We ain't getting no one's going to be meeting up and down. Nope. A lot of confusion. I think that's kind of what we're going here. There, There is no plan. People are not even talking about the future or even see themselves in the future. And I mean, right now we have like we get into these digital tools. The technology is moving faster than they can even make laws for some of this stuff. Right. That is Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Yeah, that's when we start kind of, you know, bumping all they need to change some old laws to, you know, to freshen it up a little bit to the more, you know, more current technology, you know, aspects. But, and what you know, that's actually a really so, great point for the subject today. So uh, sure. I, that, that, that brings up a question that I have. Are the laws in some cases helpful or do they diminish the ability of our digital tools and technology? The only way I see, well, the laws today are, you know, kind of more protective. So, you know, um, and it's usually, you know, a little too little too late. Again, that's where we all, you know, we learn and kind of change and then, you know, kind of go from there. The, um, what I find where kind of, where things get, uh, I say disconnected or something like that when it comes to the group and there are a lot of conversations about this right now when it comes to artificial intelligence, right? Because there are mm -hmm. closed networks, you know, uh, you know, companies that were kind of doing it by themselves, you know, using their own formulas, their own learning, their own teaching, and then put out like you know uh, a product for everyone to use, right? And then you have open ones now, open AI and open um, they call open sandboxes. That means anybody mm -hmm. can kind of come in, you know work on it use it you know add their little part to it you know hopefully it's a you know nothing that's kind of kind of get in the way right and you know there is a good chance that that will most like that open one may have again just because it has more information it has a different you know kind of opinion, may be better than the closed environments that we're used to or that we're kind of been working with right now and if you're looking for an example i mean the i i, I have to well, i was going to give an example of like with oh. Facebook, but some of the social media that we that we use, when it first came out, it was basically your free speech, and you could pretty much talk and discuss and bounce <laughs> any type of ideal in the world that you, to you wanted to discuss internationally. Now laws have caught up with it, and so now it has diminished. And some things for the good, and some things for the bad. You there are certain things now that you can't talk about. It's it, it's censored. And so it's not as open as it was when it first when when it first came hit the market. 
and yeah, and we're and we're going to wrestle and struggle with that, you know, as technology continues, you know, to evolve, as these platforms continue to evolve. Um, you know, you can't make I guess you can't make everybody happy in kind of some forms. And then, you know, as a for digital culture, you know, I you know, it is something that I do address and we're going to be addressing today. So it was an, it was a great um, uh, a great set, you know, uh, lead in segment, you know, for uh, for the digital culture segment. Uh, so uh, I, I guess using you know, kind of staying where we are there, um, the kind of like, and uh, where uh, there will be some time today that I'm going to get, I guess, negative or what I like to use the, the term shadow and all this, yeah, because mm -hmm. you have to, you have to bring it up, you know, you gotta, again, and, and that is another way of kind of looking and thinking about how you're using things or how you can be using things, but you know. Just not making it a way of life. It just Negative is necessary at some points. At some points, you know, right. I always like to tell people, you can't run a car off just straight positive energy. Yeah. You got to have negative to make a battery power. So negative right. has oh, its I place. I, 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 I kind of missed that part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to have negative in some places. I yeah. mean, there is a time and place for negative. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it's just a, it's a, it's part of the safe space that we are mm -hmm. building here so people can express that and see it in a safe environment without it being hurtful or without doing something like that but it's kind of again it's good for it to you know to get out there is energy in that you know they're in but as, again what you do with it is something different right so i guess a good way kind of to start was as, as you mentioned is like this kind of digital citizenship and kind of online activation or activism excuse me Again, mm -hmm. I'm going to be focusing strictly on the positive stuff because that's what futurism is. That's what I am, and that's why you know. Again, we, we have to start changing, you know, points of view in that way, right? So, what a lot of, um, you know, uh, what digital, uh, with the digital culture aspects of that, powered by digital, right? Like, you know, we started to see a lot of the kind of social media movements for the uh, you know raising awareness about a lot of social issues right so you, i know you mentioned before about sharing ideas and think you know and things like that on early social media right but right. there is a very positive aspect of that right so we had started to see you know raising awareness in, in places that you know we weren't allowed to talk to or, you know allowed to go you know uh, you know, uh, you know, and a lot of it has, you know, like an example would be the Me Too and the Black Lives Matter, right? Right. Kind yeah. of where, you know, think about where those uh, movements would be without some type of, you know, again, the digital background mm -hmm. on it, you know, it's, you know, the uh, distribution of it and the more, you know, and the personalization, you know, uh, you know, on that. Uh, another uh, direction where that goes is all those online petitions and, uh, cr and uh, crowdfunding changed so much on the way that we're able to you know gather you know you know share our you know our vote in a petition and or ideas and uh but uh, you know crowdfunding you know that's much more kind of outside the trend now uh is has done exponential amount of things you know in in uh, digital culture you know that we have seen here from you know obviously from product development to just kind of helping your you know fellow man to you know um uh you know uh, can't get exponential but i can't come up with more than two but, but i think that uh you know uh are you, you know uh, have you guys participated in any kind of crowd uh crowdfunding in the past or yes yes i have for uh, my own business your own business yeah mm -hmm. was it just i'm kind of curious was it successful uh yeah i would say so got it and uh i guess in, in that whole online activism and stuff is like the digital literacy programs you know kind of teaching in general but also kind of teaching responsibility and teaching ethics kind of an online behavior will also be a big driver you know from the you know technologies and such that it, you know that are kind of going on driving the digital citizenship and you know online activation you know, and again, a negative example of that would be like cyberbullying, right? And online harassment, you know, the spreading of misinformation and conspiracy theories. Uh, you guys know what an echo chamber is? I mean, in the use of this, like echo chambers used to reinforce, you know, extreme viewpoints. 
Okay, yeah. Could you explain yeah. it? You could, could you explain yeah, it? Yeah, but yeah, explain it to the people watching, please. All right, so an echo chamber is kind of like, you know, a situation or an environment or an environment usually within digital and social or whatever like that where people get get exposed to some opinions and beliefs that align with their own. And it just kind of, you know, they'll say something and it kind of continues kind of on and on and on, right? So yeah. Some of these echo chambers are, you know, again, very limited to their, you know, viewpoints, right? Because they're kind of staying within, you know, what every, what this group or that kind of only wants to talk about, only see, you know, the only the information, you know, the kind of limited existive beliefs of those things, right? But, and, and in those kind of, you know, it also, it then starts to amplify, it gets louder, right? Because you got like mind people repeating the same crap over and over again, the bad views. Uh, and it also makes people think that it's actually like prevalent, that it's real, that it's correct, because there's so much of that kind of going on, right? Echo chambers also like filter out, you know, the opposing view, you know, there's no, di no, no additional opinions and are even brought up, less discussed, you know, they're kind of like, you know, you know, taken out. Uh, another part of echo chambers um, is, uh, it feeds the algorithms in social media right right so you know a lot of people are kind of talking about it right it gets reinforced mm -hmm. you know the, the algorithm thinks that that's what people want to hear and it starts kind of moving that and kind of in, starts engaging people that would never even been kind of connected to that right yeah, exactly yeah and another shitty part you know again it, it it kind of increases the polarization you know and it decreases the critical thinking which is that clearly so important you know important right now right so yeah. limited exposure limited you know ideas you know limited people you're just going to get limited information and kind of you know, on that. Go for a walk. sorry or call a friend. it's my digital assistant but a perfect uh, time for yeah. it to pop up. Because you know, it's like, like you got digital assistance. There's even digital art and gaming. Well, of course, you know, all gaming now. So okay. there's like digital art now. Uh, so much of that. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and, and again, the ethics on that, the legal aspects of that. So it's ugly. The whole thing. Yeah. It's super yeah. Ugly. I, I don't even think the laws, well, the laws haven't caught up to a lot of that stuff and the proprietary information. And, and then there's AI that, that's still new the wild wild west even uh crypto they, they still crypto, trying to figure out what to do with that yes <laughs> yeah. like i don't yeah, know what to do with my hands <laughs> well at least for crypto you know the terminology I, I hear a lot is that it's winterized right mm -hmm. uh you know that and, and I, I just, again no one really knows what to do with it anymore you know it kind of had a direction clearly powerful clearly useful right but, you know, just kind of filling it up with winter fluids and let's kind of see how everything else kind of shakes out before we get to, right. you know, kind of use those again. But uh, it, you know, ultimately everything will be kind of heading in that direction and, you know, in some form. It just has to, we have to just kind of figure out what's going to be really kind of powering it this time. Well, we're definitely going to be replacing change. We're slowly phasing money out and cash is definitely being phased out of society. You know, I, I once was talking to the, a group and I mentioned it on some of the previous podcasts where we were yeah. talking about Gen Z and everybody was condemning Gen Z and speak negatively on Gen Z because they can't count change. And I asked people, well, who has change in their pocket right now? Exactly. They're not going to have to know in their world. They're not going to have to know how to write checks or writing cursive or whatever cursive and, and count change back to you because it's going to go away in their lifetime altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, paying with your phone, you know, paying. Yeah, with, I mean, we're already like, doing it. Digital credits, yeah. There's a, kind of a lot of that. The uh, yeah, I have. Uh, I'm, more, I'm much more positive on Gen Z, you know, than that. And there, there's two other things about Gen Z that's kind of interesting. I don't know. You know, uh, one is that, and uh, and it's actually happening in a lot of schools right now. They're moving all of the like two armed clocks. You know the circular yeah. clocks the digital clocks because a lot of gen z's and such don't know how to read don't know how yeah. to read it you can't tell time on on that kind of clock so um you know again interesting but again i can't blame them everything else that we're shoving them isn't in that form you know, right so talk about echo chambers <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, i think they need to know how to read clocks though 
you're gonna need the old trusty wind up if power goes out or whatever and you can't charge your cell phone up but then again i guess in the new world if power goes out the whole world shuts down <laughs> or, that's something to know. think about yeah <laughs> i mean just think about it you got digital money your cars are going to be electric so if power shuts down everything in the world shuts down uh yes i mean they're obviously working on it right so you have all those like and again solar chargers you know water chargers yeah. all the you know things like that so but yeah at, at, as the grid continues to be stressed and and you know again fails in some other in some other places and we haven't brought war or any other kind of like terrorism exactly. or any other kind of you know uh, very, very very kind of tricky but oh no but we're heading into a negative direction ah Let's fix it. Well, you you did say the you were gonna bring up the shadows, man. So you know, <laughs> and the nigga, but that, that also brings a different question. Why is the future futurism only positive? Well, because they're mostly because um, you know negative breeds negative, right? Just and, and mm -hmm. like in media, you know, dystopia breeds dystopia, and everything that we're watching on TV and movies and all that. You know, again, uh, bad news. You know, uh, it all uh, you know uh, feeds on itself. And we that we think okay. it's normal. We think it's an echo chamber, right? Yeah. When we're just watching that, you know, on on the news, or we you know watching you know a show about you know the fall of the Constitution and you know all kind of different you know mm -hmm. old, uh, you know different scenarios. So um, you know, positive reinforcement. You know is going it has the same effect if everything that we thought about was positive and we watched all positive stuff and we were doing positive things it would just continue to be positive you know kind of you know going mm -hmm. there so it's more like batman has a saying he goes is uh uh there's enough like superheroes in the daytime right batman <laughs> is a night is a nighttime superhero mm -hmm. right <laughs> Never so, thought yeah. about it like that. <laughs> he I'll, got the second hey, shift, the night shift. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> but I would rather so, it be like that. Feed yeah. the, so there's like, enough algorithm positivity, and it'll balance mm -hmm. itself out. Yeah, it, it'll it'll learn. It'll re, re recalibrate. Yeah. So there's enough, you know, bad stuff out mm -hmm. there. But you know, and but, I'd rather be right. You want to be on the good side. And again, where all humans are inherently good, right? So it, it is, the, you know, it is the change, of, it is the change of the mindset. It is the, you know, what, what needs, you know, to kind of, you know, happen. And, you know, the, but there's enough of, you know, of those kind of out there. Right? And a good switch on that is um, another positive, you know, direction of, of digital culture is uh, again, that collaboration of other, of online communities, right? So yeah. they got platforms like uh, GitHub, you know, for open source software. Are you familiar with that? Sure you yeah, are. yeah, yes. Yeah. You know, can you imagine like that? I mean, there's just people just who can't wait to kind of go out yeah. there and fix problems, or you know, add another kind of component to it, or you know, something. You don't even have to ask them. You know, so um, you know, I can't. You know, just I can't imagine like what where we would be without a GitHub. You know, kind of already you know kind of in place, and yeah. and if we continue to you know put positive stuff in there we're going to continue to get you know much more you know life human changing positive there that, um, that's fine no one focuses on the positive of social media all you hear is the bad of social media but you don't you don't hear how the facebook's and the exes a, a people building community in groups and discussing yeah. solving world problems and in and, and common issues I, I know and you, and, 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 even YouTube, and even YouTube, you know, we, information shows like this and others where people are getting information. I mean, I, I've had to my, my dryer went out uh, uh, Ooh, two years tough. back, whatever, saved me. <laughs> I say 400 bucks by social media. Being able to look at a YouTube, find a video, fix it. I mean, breaks everything. And I've been able to tell when somebody's running the line on me uh when something's wrong because now most appliances will give you a code whenever it breaks down i'm able to go to google and read the code and look at this code and see what this code means so when a technician comes in and they're trying to tell me something no uh, and that actually happened with my dryer which like 
He tried to tell me something like, no, it's gay, this code, and this code means this. Well, how do you know what that code means, Google? <laughs> but, you know. Can't scam no more. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it, yeah. it's really going to help. Yeah, these um, online forums, you know, groups, you know, uh, mutual support, you know, on that and collective problem solving, you know, these are all good words, you know, that the good use for digital. You know, um, you know these communities foster, co you know, cooperation, knowledge exchanges, collective mm -hmm. problems are the same, you know, and sometimes all like within the specific geographic, you know, boundaries, you know, big, you know, things that are happening here normally don't happen there and more of that continues to come in and, um, and self-support and self-growth you know what the um, trends now you know for this is the digital wellness and mindfulness and I know we're going to be addressing that you know in a deeper level in the future but it really is you know always kind of coming out there are, you know, apps and online resources promoting, you know, mental health now and well-being. Right? Yep. Uh, we can, you know, again, we can say it out loud. You know, people can kind of talk about it. And, you know, and there's, you know, someone who understands you. And, you know, whatever. It is. So we can kind of stay away, you know, from the isolation. You know, it's not particularly kind of getting out, but it's a lot better than just kind of sitting home on, you know, all that. Just there's also, yeah. There's a lot of digital detoxing, you know, initiatives being kind of going on right now to encourage like this balance, you know, mm -hmm. uh, kids, uh, like there are like school systems that are no longer letting, you know, allowing kids bring their phones into the, you know, into the buildings. Um, when they're kind of finding, you know, some, uh, 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 some early research coming out of that is that the kids actually like it, you know, kind of, right. you know. Again, remember, uh, again, there's only so much you can kind of do where your brain is paying attention to and, you know, there's and kind of moving, you know, out of that, uh, you know, the the social media companies and the phone companies themselves, you know, you can, uh, you're allowed to monitor how long you're on something, right, on websites or how long you're on your phone in general and right. all of that, right? So that's all kind of coming out of the positive aspects of that. Uh, and again, social media, you know, there are parts now that are promoting, you know, positive body, you know, imaging, self-acceptance, you know, kind of where would we be, you know, without, you know, again, a, a very wide range self, you know, self-helping, self-loving type of technologies that are, you know, that the digital culture allows. Yeah, it's going to ruffle some feathers, but I think in the overall it's probably going to do more more good than damage well yeah. it already have because you got to look at people forget about the digital age has brought remote work that wouldn't mm -hmm. be possible uh, without digital technology in the new gig economy mm -hmm. that some people don't even know exists they think that people are lazy and don't want to work and yeah. they don't realize that no people want to work people have like like rich said in the last episode you got to create your own job exactly. people have used the gig economy to create their own careers yeah and these technologies you know newer ones and and will continue i mean just look at how much uh i won't uh i won't say uber has changed but i mean it is their technology but look mm -hmm. what you know adding that on top of everything right so um you know uh you know the the ability to you know build trust right with the seller and the buyers right uh you know again you you know, we were always told, you know, never get into cars with strangers, but you know, now we can. <laughs> we know their rating, right? And you know, <laughs> exactly. not, not perfect or whatever, but you know, um, but I can now work where I couldn't do it before. Right now I have a car or whatever, I can, you know, get that. That's a that's a lot of that new economy that's coming out of like let's just say parts of you know industry four oh, which we'll talk about at another time. Uh but um you know, um, but, you know, even that technology, you know, the Uber like technology has opened up, you know, so much more to you know, food, food deliveries and yeah, the door dashes. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, the ability for you to get medicine, you know, all of that is all now, you know, open, you know, you know, so a lot of great positive stuff coming out of that part. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say a shout out to Flexi, uh, the company that's uh, redefined the gig economy, too. Hey, they turn oh, out changing how we do everything now. And I think eventually the future will be like 
slapping us in the face like all right if y'all don't start waking up to the the new way of things and and if y'all wondering what flexi is go and find our video on go flexi mm -hmm. and how they're changing the world with their innovative startup company that they got going mm -hmm. and especially if you're a restaurant owner so yeah shout out, to flexi. shout out to flexi for real yeah <laughs> definitely the great use of digital of the new digital culture all right continuous learning thank you for adding yeah, exactly. that to my, to my schedule Oh yeah, you already know. <laughs> I, I only know. I seen you that too if, uh, in the email. <laughs> this is what we do, man. This yeah. I don't know. Every time we do this, it's get, it gets more exciting because it just shows like, you know, even though we're talking about futurism, it just it's showing like now it's happening right yeah, now. It Y'all can get involved. Get involved. Support these different brands that's doing this. Well, you 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 use the term winterizing when it came to digital currency, so. I, I think the same thing has happened with the metaverse. There was a big push and oh, yeah. train with ETFs and then there was the metaverse and VR technology and, and AR technology. So I, I think that has been shelved and it, it's going to come back out. I'm pretty sure because I know Mark Zuckerberg has spent most millions, if not billions in, in, into it. And now Apple has jumped into the game. So definitely something to go forth as companies look into it and how to secure it and how they can use it for training what what trends do you see there for the winter winterized of like the metaverse and stuff yeah. yes well i mean you, you kind of hit most of it um it just uh people just did just don't know what to do with it anymore right and again it's not the technologies all the time Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, um, you know, I would say the economy can really drive, you know, some of that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and you still have, you know, you have Bitcoin and, um, you know, Ethereum that are really doing well, you know, they're really kind of on the, you know, so there is, it's that, you know, it's there, there's the engine, you know, but making it, you know, again, more efficient. I just feel no one has money anymore. So, you know, what's the use of kind of playing around, you know, with Monopoly money, if it's not, you know, kind of nothing there. Uh, again, I'm hoping, you know, for more changes and stuff like that. Like, you, you hear it a lot. Like, there's, you know, no one's having house parties anymore because no one has a house. So I feel like oh, yeah. it's like this, the same thing when it comes to how the metaverse and, and you know, crypto and all that. It just seems like, you know, we don't know kind of what to do with it. No one kind of really has it, you know. But once we start, you know, uh, you know adding more to it. Uh, you know, a lot of the web, and this kind of falls under the direction of Web 3.0. Right. That's mm -hmm. kind of like where we are now with a lot of these technologies and, uh, you know, when there's a lot of value in a lot of different uh, everywhere that we just haven't seen unless the kind of technologies kind of open it up again, what you bring to the table, right? Like you're mm -hmm. able to now, uh, you know, be a tutor, right. Or kind of something like that, you know, kind of, you know, moving it forward, getting paid, you know, all that, you know, all, all on those things. So that, right. that, you know, once, uh, you know, uh, you know, even like for some advertisers, like, you know, like your attention, you know, it's an attention driven economy, right? So True. the more you watch this, the more you go here, the more that, you know, there's, you know, they'll compensate you for your attention, right? So I think once the, a lot of more of those attention type things kind of going on, like, you know, paid, you know, uh, pay to play uh, technologies for video games. The yeah. longer you play the video game, you know, you'll get, you know, a certain amount of credits or something like that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, so there is, there's kind of stuff like that going on all over. But, um, you know, the, one of my main, uh, and I've been talking about this for some time. Uh, and I, I think I recently, uh, someone else is quoting me in some magazine or something, but, but basically had to do with SpaceX's, you know, uh, Starlink. You know the ability mm -hmm. to bring the internet everywhere on the world in around the world right mm -hmm. uh you know what what's that mean like how does like you know not everyone's just gonna you know it'd be kind of sad again if everyone's just kind of you know playing games or going on social media and stuff but there's like all those technologies that we just talked about that just open up exactly. all different ranges right a couple of weeks ago <laughs> um spacex made a plan with uh kazakhstan you don't have to look that up. It's in Asia. 
you know, where Starlink is going to is now in every uh, every cl rural classroom. You know, so it gave like 2000 different villages high speed broadband, you know, access, you know, satellite right. for, cheap, for cheap. Right. So now you got just imagine the kids in remote areas, you know, gaining like insight, you know, on like the, the tons of wealth of human knowledge that it's out there that was never. Exactly. Like, there's that great equalizer that, you yep. know, that we're looking for from the, like from this technology. Right. Uh, but you, but mentioned the you know, it's not not enough. You know, like um, you know, it's it, uh, in some of other uh, you know research and work that I've done. You know, you can have that smart. I think we you know there's a lot of people who have like a lot of schools in the United States that have that smart blackboard, right? Yeah, yeah. So connect the smart blackboard to you know the internet. You know, when you're kind of out where you know again in rural areas, villages, huts, things like that, kind of going on. It's it's good to have that, right? But that also is can teach people how to teach, right? So like a, a very big pro, you know problem with a lot of these areas, they don't have enough teachers, right? They don't have enough right. people. To well, that. Rich, can can you pitch a couple in that with the metaverse, where someone just put on these gargles and it's like you just walk through this endless mall where you got an account and it's kind of like Amazon. You just go in a store and you just kind of click on whatever you want and it shows up in your, uh, to your house or you go into this room and there's a courses being taught and you just sit down from your house and it's like you actually sitting in a virtual classroom where somebody's teaching anything you want to know. The international world store of anything in any country or any section, you can have a conversation with or you can shop there, you know. That yeah. that would really make the world a smaller place, right? Oh yeah, and you in uh, you know how you know one of my main mantras is you know when it, when we when I address technology and or you know or, or its effect you know my, you know my main word is like is like so what right you have so mm -hmm. many people kind of you know again building you know, using these kind of technologies you know to whatever to make you know a logo come out on a can that you're looking at or you know yeah, kind of mm -hmm. so what uh, you know that's that whole part about being positive you know take that energy and do something with it right right, you know, right. you know now that you have you know and um i think I, I know we may have spoken about this before i may have shown you an example about that whole social swipe right the yeah, billboards yeah. right yeah. that inspire you know, change and you know not only inspire it, but also you know, uh, you know, give it the funding and resources, right? So it's a, an interactive billboard, and the creative and stuff in there are, you know, kind, you know, are showing the uh, what it's going to do or where this money is going. You know, so yeah. if you uh, you know, it'll be a big picture of a loaf of bread, right? And you take your credit card on the screen, yeah. right? You kind of do your donation and a. The picture opens up and you know now it's a cut piece of bread and now that you know is going food kind of going to someplace else right yeah i have this vision this is one of my you know forecasts for the future is about you know just in places i don't know where it could be just in the street or you know whatever like that where you just have virtual vending machines right that, that and you know supply resources around the world right so the money is the currency, the currency and the ideas, and you know, either through a QR code or through a swipe, you know, changing the world, you know, in, in, in those levels. But then you have it kind of in front of you and you see it. And then um and then if you like in and in futurism, you know, you try to connect the dots, right? So say you have a rural town who's now connected and they know what they need. Right, they need a water pump. They know they need, you know, they, oh, you know, a school. They know they need this, you know, whatever. So, wouldn't it be great if we can kind of put, the, you know, help a rural town redesign their, you know, their their town, you know, or again, or something like that. Like where, you know, even how to start, you know, how to do it, you know, where where should our farm be? Where where can we put renewable power that it wasn't there, but you know, that we don't have before, you know swipe swipe the word kind of gets around you know and and you know you've done a lot right so you know each per each person is is, is is making is changing like the shape you know having their vision you know come through all being uploaded by some kind of 
you know, Uber like technology, you know, where the village leaders and others kind of go over, you know, have access to, you know, wider planning, uh, you know, people, technologies, you know, uh, you know, graphs and all that. And then a person's like individual dream can, can come true of kind of, you know, of changing their village, changing their town, changing like, you know, where they want to go in there. So that's like, that's another positive model that I'm, I'm trying yeah. to push for, right? Like, in, you know, get rid of misery. Let's get rid of all that stuff, you know, and, and what, what comes out of that? But, you know, like, where is, you know, there, there's going to be a whole bunch of, you know, stuff coming out of that that we'll be able to use, you know, or exactly. you know, going in our town mm -hmm. or, you know, help the next town over. Right? And this isn't tomorrow, you know, this isn't five years, 10 years. We can kind of start doing this stuff now, right? Yeah. So somebody to lead, you know, somebody to, you know, kind of help remind everybody there's a democratization of and how we're using innovative tools. And, you know, that's why we have to use our, you know, again, imagination or gaming, you know. I could really, you know, it would be great to see that as a game, Like right? Everybody kind of go, goes in, logs in, you know, everybody, you know, kind of does what they need to do. But, um, and there it is. You're there. You can see them. You can talk to them. You know, they can say thank you. They can kind of, you know, do any number of them. Right. That's, that's, the, so, that's the so what. So, you know, like, um, watch that technology that you build because don't, don't, don't make me coming around and say so what because that's not good. <laughs> we'll see. I, exactly. our, time is get, our time is getting short but i as you've noticed the digital culture is here to stay and for you the, you all that's watching us again if you made it this far don't forget to like and subscribe it helps with the algorithm it helps us Please. with our digital culture to pump this out also want to hear your comments how has this digital culture affected your life or improved your life or Give us some negative comments. Maybe we can help that if it have it decimated your life. Either way, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think uh, as we bring Rich back for more in, in this series. And I can't wait to next episode where we go into uh, Industry 4.0. If you don't oh, know yeah. what that means, stay tuned. Check out the next episode. Stay okay. tuned and check yeah. out the next episode. Yeah, you really. take off. Yeah, yeah we're going to sure be turned up in this next one. <laughs> Rich, as always, it was a pleasure. A lot of knowledge and information. I hope you had your pen and papers out. Hey, my honor. Yeah. My honor. I'm very happy that we can make a positive echo chamber around and I need a lot more of that. Likewise, man. This is what Lifestyle After Five is all about. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Lifestyle After Five. Y'all be safe out there. Stay positive. Peace. See you in the future. Peace out, y'all.